Hello, and welcome to episode 6 of Books to Barrowman, where I go through books in this history and clean up the town at the same time. Today's episode is about the lungs of Buxton, the Pavilion Gardens. The Pavilion Gardens started out life as a 12-acre, privately owned garden for those staying in the Old Hall Hotel. A beautiful hotel that has been welcoming guests since 1727. The garden was designed by Joseph Paxton in the 1830s for the 6th Duke of Devonshire. But as the railways arrived in 1863, the 7th Duke gave the land to the Buxton Improvements Company for redevelopments to accommodate higher volume of visitors arriving into the town. The new park, designed by Edward Milner, opened in 1871, taking up all the 12-acre site. The park included winding walkways, rivers, ponds, intricate flower beds, cast iron bridges and a gorgeous pavilion. The pavilion, located at the north side of the gardens, stretched along the promenade pathway with a symmetrical cast iron and glass structure in the style of London's Crystal Palace. At the centre of the pavilion is the central hall, the tallest part of the structure, which is flanked either side with long open hallways leading to large conservatories with the eastern side having the park's entrance turnstiles and ticket offices at the end. A bandstand near the centre of the park was built over a small temple. The temple was dedicated to Epona, the goddess of living waters, and was roughly 2,000 years old when it was demolished. The temple was partially reused for the bandstand as the base and still stands today. In the northwestern corner of the park at the end of the promenade and a large ice rink and service building was also built, although I'm unsure if it was a part of the park from day one. After the park's opening in 1871, the park kept expanding, and in 1875 the iconic Octagon Concert Hall was built. It was designed by Robert Ribbon Duke, and it had a capacity for 800 people. One year later, the gardens expanded once more, extending the site from 12 to 23 acres. This included a large lake, now at the southern corner of the park, and it stretched the park across a pathway. Later, around 1880 to 1890, the park had some improvements, which included a new bandstand opposite the octagon, a tennis court that utilised half the ice rink's original space, and a bowling green on the eastern side of the park. Another improvement during this time was the construction of an indoor theatre stage designed by William Bryden in 1889 behind the Central Hall. An expansion didn't stop there, as another building designed by William Bryden was built in 1899, an oriental tea kiosk located between the Octagon and Central Hall on the side of the river. In 1903, another iconic building was constructed into the pavilion the Opera House. Designed by Frank Matcham, the Opera House can seat 900 people and is a beautiful expression of Edwardian design. The pavilion was also altered to have a conservatory wrap around the Opera House as it sits where the original Eastern Conservatory building once stood. Along with this, a new entrance to the pavilion was built to the side of the entrance for the Opera House. And the theatre stage behind the Central Hall was converted for use as part of the Opera House. From 1903 onwards, expansion of the park slowed, but notable events still took place. During World War I, some of the Royal Engineers were stationed in Buxton and used the lakes for training exercises to build pontoon bridges. And in 1927, the responsibility for the park was transferred from the Buxton Gardens Company, which was set up for the gardens when it opened, onto the Buxton Borough Council. Also, in 1927, the Opera House stopped having performances and was used for silent films, up until 1932, when the theatre was wired for sound and could present films with audio. Over the years, the Octagon was used for antique fairs and markets. It also hosted many entertainment events, including boxing and the Beatles, twice. The tennis courts held tournaments up until the 1950s, where the ice rink and the courts were demolished. In the 1960s, the tea kiosk was used as an arcade, and in 1972, on the site beside the Octagon, a new indoor swimming pool and gym was opened by Princess Anne. 
and a car park was also built over the top of the old ice rink and tennis courts, as well as a miniature train built in the centre of the park. In 1976, the Opera House was in a state of disrepair and subsequently closed. Thankfully, the building was refurbished and reopened in 1979 and has remained open ever since. In 1982, the conservatory on the eastern side was converted into a greenhouse with a fish pond and tropical plants, but sadly one year later, disaster struck as the central hall had a major fire, leading to the requirement of a full rebuild. As time went on, different parts of the park have come under disrepair and major renovations were needed. These renovations took place between 2000 and 2004. This included new park equipment, a rebuilt miniature train, as well as many other improvements along the way. More recently, a complete repaint of the pavilions took place, changing the monochrome colour scheme of the gardens into a beige and maroon look. I do quite like this new look. Comment below what your opinion is of the new colour scheme. Well, that's the rough history of the gardens. Now, don't blame me if I've missed stuff out. The gardens has a long history, and part of which are worth a video in their own right. But corrections are welcome. Nowadays, the gardens are owned by the High Peak Borough Council and managed by Parkwood Leisure. The Octagon still hosts many events, including markets and conventions, as well as indoor bouncy castles. The Opera House has multiple shows that come and go, and the old theatre stage behind the Central Hall is a cinema. Speaking of which, the Central Hall is now a cafe, and there are also multiple other food outlets on park. During peak season, you'll find attractions, with paddle boats, mogo rounds, inflatables, and my favourite, the miniature train. So if you'd like to visit, I'll leave the appropriate links down below. And of course, I've gone ahead and cleaned up in this video. Two wheelbarrows full during horrible winds, meaning I've picked up everything in the barrow at least twice. But that's pretty much it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed, and ta now.